Happy Monday, stampers. This is Barb Reed, the Wexford Stamper, and I'm here with day five of the 10 days of Halloween. I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend and got out in the nice weather. So we are gonna go ahead and start here shortly. Let's first talk a little bit about a recap from last week, some of our projects from last week. Day one, we made this fabulous moon mini moon pie box. All these um, tutorials are available on my blog and on my YouTube channel. And then we made this little tuck behind box where you tuck your flap right behind the circle that makes your embellishment. Hello, Renee. Hi, Joanne. And that's that one there. And then we had the door hanger. Love this one. And this one holds lots and lots of goodies and a great way to surprise a friend around Halloween. That was three. And then four was my little lip balm holder. So those are the four we had last week. Hey, Mary, nice to see you. All right, so tonight we have this cute little box that we're going to be using. And um, when I was a trick-or-treater, back when I was a kid and I'd go trick-or-treating with my brother, we'd always, we had lived in a big development, but we'd always go to a certain house. We always made sure it was part of our our travels the night of Halloween that we stopped at that house. And the reason we wanted to stop at that house was it was amazing because the family at that home give ev gave everybody a standard size Hershey bar. And that was just unheard of. So we really made sure that we stopped there for the the big candy bars. So that's what we're making a treat box for this evening. It is a quick little project and it holds that standard size candy bar right in there. Okay, so let's first talk about the products that we're gonna use. And for my entire series, I've been trying to use the same products um, for all 10 projects. All right, so here's the first one. This is the Gingham Cottage DSP. This is a great pack because it has 48 sheets. And not only is the gingham great for Halloween, it's great for Christmas, it's great for um, Easter, and all kinds of different um holidays. So this is a great pack. It'll go a long way, especially with all those sheets you're going to get. All right, and the other one we're going to be using tonight is the Scary Cute Stamp Set. Always have been um, someone who loves the little cute sentiments for Halloween, and I thought this was a great choice. This is a red rubber set, and I love the cute little silhouettes of the trick-or-treaters. Okay, so those are the products we're going to be using this evening, and as always, we will, I will have a PDF on my blog following this um, live stream. And in fact, I have every one so far of the um, projects for my 10 days of Halloween are all in PDF form on my blog. And if you ever want to get to my blog, it is www.thewexfordstamper.blogspot.com. I also have the video tutorials on my um, YouTube channel. You can just search the Wexford Stamper on there. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. This is quite quick. So this would be a great one to do if you are in a hurry and want to put something together, maybe for your daughter's class or for a appreciation gift around the holidays. Um, this would be a great one for that. 
Okay, so let me grab my PDF here, and I'm going to make sure I'm looking at the correct numbers. Okay, we're going to use Gorgeous Grape tonight. It's not, you know, your average Halloween color, but I love it. I think it goes great with the orange and black together. So we're gonna use this sheet of gorgeous grape cut at six and a half by five and five eighths. Let me grab my scoring board here. And let's go ahead and score on the six and a half um, inch side first. That is, let's see, we're going to score at three eighths, which is just three tick marks from the edge. Uh, Hershey bar is pretty thin, so the box doesn't need to be real, stand real high. Okay, and then the other one is six and one eighth. So that's all for our long side. And I'm going to turn it this way. And we are going to score at, this is the short side, three eighths again two and five eighths, that's one tick mark past half, three inches, five and one quarter inch. Okay, so that is all the scoring we'll need for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bone folder and I'm going to go ahead and crease all of my score lines. Bone folder is a great way to get those nice strong creases in your cardstock because stamping up cardstock is pretty thick. It's a lovely weight. It's going to be very durable for your 3D projects. So this really helps to get good creases in them. And you want to get good creases in your boxes so they come together very nicely for you. Okay, so there is all the creasing. Everybody see that? All right, now I'm gonna grab my template. This is a very easy cut. All you're gonna need to do is cut the six squares on your cardstock box template, not your template, but your box. You're gonna cut those away from the box to form the little tabs, okay? Let me show you how that works. I'll grab my little snips here, and let's hold it this way. We'll hold it in the profile position, and I'm just gonna snip up the vertical score lines just to the first horizontal, okay? So we now have these three little squares here, and these are gonna be our flaps that hold our box together and they are tiny little flaps but you still want to take a little bit away because even though they're tiny flaps the box right there is pretty tiny as well and you don't want to have it interfering with the box coming together okay so there's one side okay here are those three tabs then I'm just going to turn it opposite way holding it in the portrait position i'm going to snip up those three four vertical score lines to the first horizontal and then i'm going to cut out a couple of wedges here and what you want to try to do here is cut away the pieces that have the um, score line on and then that makes it a lot smoother for putting together Okay, so there, pretty simple idea for cutting. Not, and that's what makes this box really quick and easy to make. You can rip off a bunch of these at a time. Okay, now I'm gonna take, before I put it together, I'm gonna take a circle punch. I've got a three quarter here, anything would work. That's pretty small. And you want to approximate where the center of this tiny little panel here is this is going to be the panel that is right at the front of your box so i'm going to put a little thumb 
spot in it so that you can the um, recipient can open it very easily. Let's see, that's pretty close, see? Okay, and that allows the recipient to just kind of put their thumb in there and open the box so they don't have to stick their finger in the box and maybe tear it, okay? Then the next thing we're gonna do, let's turn it over to the front. We're gonna go ahead and put our designer series paper on here. Now the size of that paper is five and five eighths by two and an eighth. Okay, and again, I took it from the Gingham Cottage paper and that's gonna fit right here on the front of the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my glue and that's a great one too. That's what I love about this. If you like the tight gingham or the wider gingham, okay, whichever works. Let's make it with the wide this time. What do you say? So we'll put the glue on the back here. All right, and we're gonna lay that right in here. And it's a great idea to put your designer series paper on your box before you assemble it, because then you can kind of push down and get a good firm grip onto your box top. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and we're gonna add just a tiny bit of glue on each of these little tabs. Now let's work with these four first because those four are gonna create the box, okay? So I'm gonna take just a tiny bit, okay? Teeny tiny on those four there, okay? I'm just gonna fold up the small panel and fold it the little tab behind the side panel and make sure that this side of the panel and the fold line up just like that and I'm just going to squeeze and hold that for a minute. Okay now let's do the same on this side. Okay we're just holding on to those so they get a good grip and it's a good idea to not use a lot of glue because if you use a lot, it tends to take a lot longer to dry. Just kind of use enough, just enough to cover the tab. You don't need to make a thick layer. Okay, and then our last one here. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and push down on those two now. Remember, you want to measure it so that your, not measure it, you want to hold it so that your end of your panel is right up to the fold on the tab. That one looks good. Let's check this one one more time. Okay, there we have it. The box portion is done. And let me grab my Hershey bar here and I'll put it right in. Okay, so it fits perfectly the Hershey bar in there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create the lid. So we're gonna do the same thing. Oops, I noticed right here my designer series paper is not totally glued down. There we go. Gonna put a little glue on the final two tabs. I'm gonna pick up the box. I'm gonna fold down the front panel with my little thumb tab hold thumb tab there and then I'm going to fold down the tab along the side and then the side and line up that edge with the fold okay and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side let's put it down so I can Fold it back and then the side panel down. And then I'm gonna hold for just a minute. Give us a chance to let that dry. Hope everybody's having a, a good at evening. It, we had a major rainstorm here today. I was over at Target, but um, it was coming down hard because it was loud. So I'm glad I was inside for that one. Okay, well there is your box. That's how easy that is to make. Perfect size for the standard Hershey bar. All right, let's quickly make our um, embellishment for the front of the box. I'm going to be using one of the stitched rectangles and these come in a set 
look like this. This is actually just one of them. You get, I have enough for two um, uh, little slip pockets of the little stitched rectangles. Love these. These are really, really come in handy. They just add a little bit of um, fun to your the outsides of your square. You can see the little stitches there. Okay, if you don't have that, you can just go ahead and cut out a rectangle in the basic white. Okay, now I am going to grab the cute little trio of trick-or-treaters here. And I'm going to grab my gorgeous grape because, hey, we want everything to match. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my little rectangle. Now, since the gorgeous grape is a pretty dark ink, I'm going to go ahead and stamp off on my scrap paper here and then um, stamp it on my little rectangle. So here I'm going to stamp here. And then I'm going to stamp right on to my rectangle. And there they are. Okay, just so they're little, it's a little lighter so my message or my sentiment will show up a little better. Okay, then I'm gonna grab my Memento ink and take the Trick or Treat You're So Sweet. And I'm just gonna put that right over those cute little trick-or-treaters. There it is. Trick-or-treat, you're so sweet. All right, put that away. And now I'm gonna grab my box back here and with dimensionals, I'm gonna put that right in the bottom right-hand corner there. All right, dimensionals. I'm gonna use up these edges because they work just as well as the little middles. So I'm just gonna put two little pieces of the edge right on the back. And then I'm gonna put that right here on the bottom right hand corner. Okay, now, as I've done with all the other projects, you can use the black and white gingham ribbon but I just wanted to kind of go a little different today. And I got the, here's the black and white. You could certainly use that. I found some Calypso Coral, which is a perfect Halloween color. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut, or well, let me practice what I preach, okay? I'm not gonna cut it off the roll. Okay, I'm just going to put it right under my, my um, box here, and I'm going to go ahead and tie my bow right off the spool. Okay, so there we go. Okay, that looks not too bad, right? All right, I'm gonna pull a little bit. Let me move this up a little bit by tugging a little bit on the back and it pulls my ribbon up. Then you kind of floof it however you like. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off the roll. Here we go. All right, let's cut this one here. And this one here. All right, and if you do that, you save a little bit of ribbon if you just do it right on the spool and don't just cut it off because it's hard to judge exactly how much ribbon you're going to need. So that's always a better way to go. I got to try to remember to do that all the time. So that is my cute little Hershey bar box. I hope you love that really simple to make. We're only, let's see, 20 minutes into the tutorial and we're finished. So I hope you love that one. And I hope you can join me again tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a non-edible trick-or-treat 
treat. So come on and join me tomorrow and see what I'm gonna be making a box for. So thanks for joining. And we're halfway through our 10 days of Halloween. So I hope you can join me for the next five. Alrighty, take care and keep on stamping.